Thanks for checking out this movie review video. So this is for the 2021 French film and mm, kind of horror, uh, Titane. Now, this is very new, obviously, so there will be no spoilers in my review except thematically and metaphorically, like the subtext that's at play, all that type of stuff. But I will not be spoiling the actual events of the film at all, except just a little synopsis of like, you know, one sentence or two. Uh, but I'm not going to give you much of any information. So if you don't want any, if you want to figure out on your own the metaphor, subtext, all that type of stuff, maybe this review is not for you. But otherwise, this is a good review that you can watch if you've seen it or if you haven't seen it and you're trying to make up your mind if you want to see it. Also, this one goes out to Blue Room and Dot, two individual subscribers who have been wanting me to review this. Uh, and this is something I'm thinking about doing a little bit more of covering newer films from the year then I'm recording within uh, and just kind of throw those up every now and then on Wednesdays. So if there are other films people want to see, go ahead and put it down there. I rented this one on Vudu, V-U-D-U, and it was only like seven or eight bucks. But for some reason, I got some sort of discount. So it was only like five bucks, basically. So I was like, that's worth a rental. Go ahead. Uh, although I know someone wanted me to do Last Night in Soho, and that's like 20 bucks right now. So I'm like, I don't know if I'm going to do that one right now. But if, you know, I hit a patch where I'm feeling a little squirrely, feel like spending a little more than maybe I will. But anyway, this is about to tame. So, directed by Julia Ducournau. Now, if that name sounds kind of familiar, she made a big splash when she did her film Raw. Now, that has a cannibalism bent to it. I had heard a lot about it when it first came out. I think it was on Netflix. Uh, that was the first streaming service to get it. And I watched it there and... Enjoyed the film, quite good, but like a lot of films, the hype was huge, and people were like, oh, it's so intense, it's so disgusting, it's so blah, blah. I didn't really think so. It's a good film, but it was kind of like oversold on those types of things. Also, that's the thing that like Netflix does a lot, where they're just, they like blow out the uh, responses of, it's so brutal, it's so gory, it's so horror-driven. Yeah, it's like a marketing thing they do, but anyway... Julia Ducournau, a very good director, by the way. Her directing and cinematography is always on point. It is that way in Raw. It is that way in Tatane. The film looks phenomenal, and I expected that having seen Raw. And honestly, in the very beginning of watching the film, I started, like, literally actual scenes from Raw started popping into my head because the visuals look so similar. And it's very, very visually pleasing. Love the aesthetic as well. So the script for this was written by Ducar now, as well as uh, cons some writing consultants. So I don't know to what degree they were involved. And that was Jacques Akoti, uh, who's also written the script The Heart's Cry, Thelma, and Win Win. And also Simonetta Gregio. Uh, just saying. Ducar now became the second female director and the fourth woman to win the Palme d'Or at Cannes. I know some people say cans, but apparently it said con. Yes, so that is the big prize, the Palme d'Or. But um, so th this won, like this was a big festival hit. And I know that there are people who are very divided on this film. Like some people are like, this is phenomenal. And some people are like, this is terrible. Uh, I am not, I I'm more towards the phenomenal side, but I'm not all the way to the phenomenal. I did enjoy this film. I don't think I would watch it again, honestly, just because I think it plays really well to see it one time, experience it, and understand what the subtext and the metaphors are at play here, because they're pulled off really well. Like, the metaphors and the subtext are pulled off really well and really interesting, but as, like, a straight-up, like, film story, that suffers a lot at the hands of the metaphor and the subtext, because... In order to kind of get the point across the way that they chose to do it, it's not that fun and exciting, to be honest. Uh, at least that's how I felt about it. But the other thing that I need to say, kind of disclaimer for this, is that there's a certain population of people that the subtext and the metaphors are for, that they're kind of like sympathizing with to a degree, and I'm not a part of one of those subgroups. So my experience of this film is going to be vastly different from those people. And I could definitely see where those individuals would really take to this film and really kind of feel like I have been seen now. Like I, I really 
you know, feel like someone understands it because it's it's in film at this point in a with in a big film that's actually getting a lot of attention. So I honestly wouldn't be too surprised if this base material gets taken and used by other filmmakers to come because this is kind of the first time that this has been done and I think it's done well. So I think it's definitely one of those things that people kind of jump on and, and try to emulate to certain degrees. Anyway, sorry, it's taken me a while to get to this, but the quick synopsis of it is, it's about a, um, a person who at a young age gets into a car accident, has a piece of metal titanium put into their head uh, on their skull because of, you know, a crack or a piece missing. That's not, you know, said, but, um, and it is about that life-changing event and then what happens with their life after that. Now, there are some parallels about what the metal in the head actually means and their affinity for automotive uh, automobiles because of that, and those are kind of like the metaphor things. So there really is kind of like a a drawing between humans and cars in this film, uh, especially an idea of kind of like what's under the hood and equating human beings to knowing what's under the hood or being able to guess what's under the hood or the understanding that what's under the hood has no specific gender role within the automobile industry. It just makes the car work in a sense. The opening sequence backstory is a bit confusing uh, with how it ends up ending. You're kind of like, what is really at play here? But as you go along with the film, you kind of get to understand it more. It really does fit into the overall theme, the subtext, the metaphors that are at play here. So um, for that reason, I would say for some people, this might be good to go back and do a rewatch, and then you'll pick up on kind of all the cues that they're trying to throw at you. But yeah, I, I don't have an interest in watching it a second time, but it was good, very good for a first experience. As soon as I start, oh, I already said this, as soon as I started watching it, I started thinking about Scenes of Raw. The first horror-related thing that happens in this has a very interesting audio change, and it was done, I think, twice within the film. Uh, and the the first one, at least, it serves as like a part of the actual sound design that you're supposed to like understand what's going on with a particular character auditorially. But it's also really interesting because they turn it into the music for the film at the same time. It's really interestingly done. I don't think I've ever experienced that before, at least not done in that way. And I was really taken by that. I was like, this is an excellent trick here. And I wish that more filmmakers would kind of use that. Maybe it was accidental. I don't know. But it was brilliant, in my opinion. And I loved how that was done. About 15 minutes into this is the big WTF moment uh, where you wonder what's really going on here and what's really the ultimate point of the film. Uh, a lot of people are, I kind of have a feeling that that moment I'm speaking about, that big WTF moment so early on, may be the point where a lot of people decide to turn the film off because it's very left field. Um, I'm all about the left field as long as it has a purpose within the film, and this certainly does. So that's totally good with me. Also, I just like weird, crazy things in film. So I was I was all in once this thing happened. The spurts of violence that happen are very wild, and you feel like you kind of never know when they're going to be popping up. So I like that aspect to it. It keeps you on the edge of your seat to a degree because of that. Um, there's some really good violence and gore in it, but it's, it's not a lot. Uh, there's some good practical effects, there's some good use of CGI as well, and there's some good kind of disturbing and horrific type stuff. I know a lot of people have said things about, you know, kind of being a little Cronenberg-esque with some body horror. I think it's definitely a very different aspect of a body horror, but sure, there are elements of a body horror film to it. There is some slight humor that comes up, uh, once that I can really think of, that I thought was kind of funny. I did enjoy the really slight hu humor. It's pretty early on, and you'll kind of know what I mean. It takes place in a mansion, so if you know what I mean. Something that a character says. There is some great camera movement in this. Very interesting uh, angles and some framing of shots. Uh, another thing is a lot of the locations are very interesting looking. They did a really good job with interesting lighting. And this goes back to what I was saying. Uh, Ducournau does an outstanding job with visuals, 
wonderful director. The cinematography with with uh, their films, wonderful. Um, love it, love it, love it. Such a good uh, visual experience. There's a scene about 35 minutes into the film with no music where you're watching something escalate kind of slowly, but it's slowly escalating and it kind of makes you cringe. Not in the sense of like, oh, this is terrible, but in the sense of like, I really hope that they don't go there because it makes me squeamish to a degree. And yeah, they kind of like go, they don't go too far, but they go far enough that you're going to potentially be uncomfortable with it. I was, I, I found myself, like my body was kind of tensing with anticipation of like what's coming. Cause it's one of those things that kind of gets to me in film where it's like, Ugh. so yeah, uh, I, and I enjoy that when I feel those things, I immediately give credit to the filmmaker. Cause I'm like, wow, you made me feel something I did not want to feel. And I feel like that indicates really good writing and filmmaking. No character with any real importance uh, to the story acts in a very straightforward manner within the film. And I think that may end up turning a lot of people off because for that reason, they're not that relatable. And this is what I'm talking about because that works for the metaphor for the subtext. It doesn't really work for the actual straight up story of doing a film, in my opinion. And that's why I'm saying like a lot of people have a hard time finding characters relatable for that reason. But it works, so I understand like why the characters are that way, because you needed it to pull off what they were trying to pull off, in essence. After a very interesting start to the film, it does slow down significantly, significantly and it really does feel like it starts to stagnate. It's, a, it's like an hour and 48 minutes running time with the credits involved, and I think the credits are around like five minutes or so. Um... And it should probably have been cut down, in my opinion. Uh, there is some stuff that happens during the really slow parts that is important. But there is a lot of just kind of like hammering home that same thing that I think they could have cut down on, in my opinion. And it would have really helped the pacing out. Also, there are certain ways that they could have chosen to write things to make it a little more interesting, a little more intense, a little more upbeat. Uh, the very beginning of the film kind of gives you, probably about the, the first like half hour or so, gives you the idea that it's going to be one type of movie and may be very like fast-paced, intense, with these spurts of violence. But then after that, it really takes a step back, gets way more slow, gets way more serious. There's a lot less of a horror aspect to it. And it just may end up turning into something you're not really looking for. And so I was still really good with it, but I was really also just hoping hoping that it would be a continuation of like that first 30 minutes. So it just kind of threw me a bit. Keep track of where the main character starts with their journey to their end point. Because it's a kind of a confusing journey, but that's also the point of the journey, is that as an audience member, it kind of makes you feel confused. A lot of the stuff about this film is confusing, and that's why I think a lot of people will end up not liking it, but that's part of the point of it. It's making you feel that way for a reason. And you'll kind of probably understand why when I get to some of my closing statements on this film. Also, do pay attention to the journey of the big secondary character that becomes known probably about 45 minutes or so into the film. Uh, because their worlds do come together, those two characters. And the journeys that they both have are important. And they do tie in together. So take note of those. The film works as a metaphor, but not as a normal film story experience, as I was saying, and that may turn people off. Uh, I do believe this to be a very big statement on gender norms. Uh, and myself, personally, I have never been into gender norms. You know, I am a straight white male. I definitely am. But it makes sense to me that gender norms don't really make sense because, which is, that's a confusing statement, I'm sorry, but... Uh, even when I was young, you know, I, I was raised in a family where my father worked a lot and my mother mainly took care of myself and my two sisters. So I come from a very female perspective in my life. And I've also had a lot of female friends throughout my life as well. Um, at certain times, even more, more female friends than male friends. And yeah, I mean, like my life experience has been very different. I've also just kind of been that type of person who's never really liked the norm in life. I've always kind of sought different 
like being different and being a part of things that are different. So it's always made sense to me, like gender norms are too strict, too rigid, and they don't fit everyone. And I just don't see the use for them really anymore. So this film kind of speaks to me in that sense. Um, but it doesn't speak to me as much as it probably speaks to some. The film's translation, just to let you know, Titane, what it is translated to, it's t titanium. Now, I looked it up, and titanium is actually classified as a transition metal, so I think that is important to know about it. It is also low density and high strength, so that, I think, is also important. Those two tidbits about titanium are definitely at play in a certain way within this film. So, those are my closing statements on Titane. I did enjoy the film. Um, it is good. Uh, I think I'm going to give it a three and a half star rating. I was between three and a half and four stars out of five, but I think I'm going to go with the three and a half just because I really do think it should have been cut down some because the pacing really does suffer towards the end of the film. It's definitely longer than it needed to be. Uh, the other thing is, it, like I said, like it, certain ways the characters are and certain things that happen in the film, it really works for the overall metaphor, but it also really kills the overall film experience story. And there are a lot of films that are able to kind of marry those things really, really well, uh, so that like you're, it's still super engaging and fast paced and intense, but you're also getting the point of, of what the subtext is within the film. So for that reason, I'm going three and a half, but I did very much consider a four star because I do enjoy the film. Like I said, I probably won't watch it again just because I don't feel like I need to, but I would probably watch it with someone who hasn't seen it just to see what their take is on it. But anyway, I would love to hear everyone else's thoughts on it. Go ahead and put it down in the comments if you love it, if you hate it, uh, if you're in between on it. I uh, would love to hear your comments. But let's make it const like constructive. You know, I don't want people just being like, I love it. I hate it. Tell me why. What do you not like about it? What do you love about it? I, I want to know those things. Also... If you are, if you know what like the subtext is to it, or you're very aware, um, and you're not like a big fan of it, that's fine. But don't throw vitriol about it because people don't think well of you when you do things like that. Uh, so just saying. But anyway, put some comments down there. Let's get nerdy about this. Oh, and you can do spoilers in the comments. Go ahead. We can talk spoilers in the comments. This is no spoiler review, but spoilers in the comments. Totally good. Let's get deep on this one. Also, let me know, are there other newer films that you want me to do? I've been thinking about doing Pig, because that's on Hulu now. Also, the film Censor, which is also on Hulu, which is a new one. Thinking about Last Night in Soho, but I would have to rent that, and I kind of want to see if maybe it comes down a little bit, because 20 bucks for a rental, I don't know how I feel about that one. Like I said, uh, Titane ended up being like 5 bucks for me, so that's like that's a nice deal. I will pay that anytime. But uh, do me a quick favor, hit subscribe if you haven't already. If you're already a subscriber to my channel, you are awesome, and I thank you very much. Uh, if you're not, you can join. Uh, it is quick, painless, it costs you zero dollars, and it's your way to keep me motivated here, literally, and repay me for doing these videos if you like any of them. Uh, also, I, if you subscribe, then you'll know, or also, notification bell button, hit that, hit that as well, because then you'll know when I'm putting up new videos, but you'll also know when I'm putting up polls. I'm starting to do this thing where I'm trying to do like one poll every month of some movies that I've been meaning to watch and review, but I just know I can't get to any, all of them super soon. So I'll put the poll up and have people vote and what, whichever one gets the most votes, that's the one I'll do sooner. The most recently, the one that won for that was Motel Hell and the month prior for October was the original Candyman. So yeah, you can then have the power to make decisions on one film that I review a month. I might change that though. Uh, maybe I'll put up a, a poll for these types of films. But anyway, I'm going on too long about this. Regardless, I thank you very much for taking your time to watch this video. And until next time, keep it brutal.